Kofi's not for everybody. You know, the style of play some teams play. Uh, they don't want that. Kofi Coburn, born September 1st, 1999. If I told you I had a 7-foot center, 293 pounds of all muscle, averaged 20 and 10 his final year in college, led his team to the tournament, and was a consensus first-team All-American, you'd think Shaquille O'Neal, aka Shaq, all over again, and get excited what the future could hold if he were to be drafted to your team. Shaq too dominated college basketball and like Kofi, left after his junior year where he averaged over 20 and 10 as well. O'Neal was the first overall pick in the 1992 draft and went on to have a dominating career that set the standard for big men entering the NBA, was a five-time NBA champion and Hall of Famer that has statues built in his likeness because of his exceptional work on the floor and off. Except, the player I present to you isn't Shaq and didn't change the future for any team because shockingly he wasn't drafted at all in 2022. A true testament to where the game of basketball has gone and a sad reality for players like Kofi Coburn who for their hard work and dedication all throughout high school and college that made them top prospects and high profiled athletes received little in return as far as NBA opportunity. Many don't understand that as an athlete, your entire life is athletics. The way you carry yourself, the way you go about your day, the friends you make, the way people treat you, is all focused on the sport you play, and if you're deemed talented enough, you lock in even deeper into developing your young self for a future in sports. When you go undrafted on the professional ranks, it can either create a chip on your shoulder that allows you to push even harder and eventually prove doubters wrong or it sends you down a path through other leagues all around the world and you either become content or forgotten and the NBA never comes calling. For a guy like Coburn who should have been a shoe in lottery pick, who knows what that did to his confidence to see 58 players, some you've dominated over the years as a high ranked prospect throughout high school and all American caliber player in college all taken without your name called at all. Then to learn that 8 of them never even made the team they were drafted to and never played in the NBA at all can be even more frustrating. For a 7 footer, mobile, high motored, dunked almost everything he touched in the paint and as physically imposing as Kofi, it leaves many surprised that never translated to NBA success like it did for the aforementioned Shaquille O'Neal. He was a standout player that did everything they tell you should get you to the NBA level and still that opportunity has yet to be given. He's 24 years old now and has been overseas since being undrafted in 2022, fighting to one day get that call. For these reasons, that day hasn't come yet and may never come. What happened to Kofi Coburn? Let's talk about it. Salute to my name is my name on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Kofi Coburn is a 7-foot center from Kingston, Jamaica, and like many where he's from, grew up with sports like soccer and track and field as focuses before he was encouraged by his brother to play basketball. The elder brother saw Kofi's potential at an early age, beginning with his physical advancement compared to most of his peers. At 11, he moved to Brooklyn, New York, and began really playing the game at 15, becoming a high caliber prospect by his junior year. He transferred to Powerhouse Oak Hill Academy for his senior year, where schools like Kansas, Oregon, Yukon, and of course Illinois were all after the program changing center. He'd visit Illinois on a night they lost to Florida Atlantic and realized where he could be of assistance. It was then the decision to commit to Illinois was made and immediately he became an intricate piece to the fighting alumni, improving his play every season over the next three years. Stun number one, the game changed and left him behind. Not necessarily Kofi specifically, but all centers like him that possess a game style better suited for pass errors. 
the main reason a player like Shaquille O'Neal can go number one in 1992 and 30 years later nearly the same player in size and production goes undrafted is because of the time and different styles of play era to era. After evaluating Coburn at the NBA Combine, scouts labeled him the most imperfect fit for the modern day game, which has been most affected by the emergence of small ball. Small ball basketball in layman's terms is where every player on the court is a threat to do anything if need be, especially on offense and especially the big men. They are expected to be able to switch everything on defense, including guarding small guards quick enough to keep them out the lane and also quick enough to get back to a position they can protect the basket. Offensively, they can step out and knock down a mid-range jump shot and from three-point line with comfortability and underratedly important, they can pass with quick enough reaction and creativity that gives their team another uncommon attack point. These things is why a guy like Nikola Jokic is a two-time MVP, champion and one of the best players in the league. He does all that at a high level. Small ball though isn't some new thing. Teams like the Denver Nuggets used small ball in the 80s to outrun teams. Don Nelson did as well with the Mavericks to gain advantages. And who can forget the Mike D'Antoni, Steve Nash, Amari Stoudemire era with the Suns that really put small ball on the map. The Golden State Warriors found the perfect mix and are the first and latest to dominate using small ball, changing how teams likely play forever. Coburn in this era is basically the anti-change. He doesn't shoot jumpers, only attempting 1-3 his entire college career that was a miss. He isn't at all a passer or playmaker, averaging 0.5 assists for his career and although he dunked a lot, wasn't seen as a guy that could play smoothly off pick and rolls for a lob or a high IQ pass finding an open teammate. Moses' production was back to the basket and against smaller competition, which nowadays is easily defended through schemes in the NBA and met with similar size and strength, making an average athlete like Coburn in no man's land and a clog on the floor. In the 90s, he'd be a lottery pick. In 2024, he's playing somewhere in Korea. Stunt number two, not developing those attributes. Kofi Coburn tested the NBA draft waters after his sophomore year in college, a year he was a second team All-American and first team All-Conference. He'd end up returning to school for his junior season, saying he learned that the NBA is an entirely different game and he's absolutely right. But I wonder if he understood certain pieces of what that meant and how it affected him because he returned to school as a junior and stylistically was the exact same player, just used more often in the lineup, being the only high caliber prospect on the team his junior season. There was no added jump shot, no different offense that utilized pro sets and the pick and roll, and no improved passing and playmaking from that position. I also often wonder how these coaches on the college level, who's seen exactly what teams in the NBA need and want, who also understands how the game is changing, yet they don't do anything to protect their players' future. They just use them the best way they could to help their program win more games and not focus on developing the player for life after he leaves college. Yes, it falls on Coburn to help himself, but it's also the responsibility of the grown adults around young men like Kofi to teach them what's right and how they can go further along with how to win on the college level. Kofi Coburn with a jump shot and better playmaking ability is a scary prospect on any level. Why wasn't that a focus? All he did his junior season was further round himself into the most imperfect fit in today's game and no teams were left interested and even after successful showings in Japan and now Korea still has no prospects of joining the NBA, mainly because his skill set still isn't needed. Stunt number three, last chance not going so well. What I will say is the NBA, specifically the Utah Jazz, did at least give him an opportunity. He was signed by the team after going undrafted to an Exhibit 10 contract, which is a one-year non-guaranteed deal and was added to its summer league roster. A chance to show his team and the league his style could still be effective in this era. 
He played in three games for the Jazz and in 18 minutes per averaged 6 points and 9 rebounds. His 9 boards a game ranked him 11th throughout Summer League, but outside that further drove home the fact he still wasn't ready for that level. 9 rebounds in Summer League is like 4 or 5 rebounds in the same minutes in the NBA. He still couldn't shoot, attempting no threes, and shot 47% overall from the field. With the ball in his hands, he seemed out of place in the faster, more spread offense, with a shot already in the air before he could set up for position on the block to prepare his moves. The Jazz decided against picking up his contract, and a training camp invite from them or anyone else never came. He headed to Japan to play in the B League for a year, where he averaged 19 and 12, and for the 23-24 season signed to play in Seoul, Korea, where he's averaging 23 and 11 boards. He's now 24 and who knows, maybe he does get the call at some point, but for now it looks like the game has left him behind. All in all, Coburn still can enjoy a great pro career even if not in the league. For a guy that started playing less than 10 years ago, he's done well for himself getting to this point, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Salute, much respect, it's your boy Jay-Z Stunted Growth, and I'm out.